today it's time to check and service my low water cutoff. So checking is easy. What we do is uh, I've got the boiler running right now. I just, just t turned it on and um, we're going to drain some water out and see if the low water cutoff does its job. The low water light came on so the probe is no longer sensing the water and it just turned off the boiler so that's good I don't have an auto feed if I had an auto feed it would it would be turning that on and um, but it's just uh, just killing the boiler so it'll just stay here like this uh, until there's enough water to um, be sensed by the probe. So that's great. And also, I, I've never, uh, let's see, I installed this boiler in the end of 2020, and it's now the end of 2024, and I've never yet cleaned the probe of the low water cutoff. So it's probably time to do that. So uh, we'll get started with that next. All right, so we loosen this screw on the one side. I think we just have to loosen it. And there's another screw on the other side. All right, great camera work. In my defense, it's pretty tight back here so trust me I'm loosening it all right we loosen those two screws and we take this off and uh, I will go ahead and cut the power to the boiler because I don't want to short anything out here but here's the here's the probe Right here, we are just gonna, uh, I'm gonna disconnect, um, disconnect the uh, electrode or here, the, the connection to the probe. And then I'm going to, looks like I'm gonna loosen these two screws, which will let me remove the low water cutoff off of the boiler. So let's give that a shot. Looks like we can get away with just loosening these. Oh boy. Someone was eating their Wheaties at the uh, plant when they put that on. All right, did I get it? Oh, geez, okay, I got it. That was a little too much. All right, so there's that. Then there's this wing nut there we go don't want to lose that so that's cool and then yeah comes right off can uh, set it right there on the ground no problem. Now, uh, if we look from the side here, we can see there's a good sized hex, uh, I don't know, facing on here. This whole thing is a, is a giant uh, screw that can, uh, that'll come out of the boiler housing there. So uh, I'm gonna get my crescent wrench and um, put a little effort on that and see if I can get that to turn. Okay, that was not fun at all. I got, you know, I got too much stuff 
on all the different ports on my boiler. So I only had like, I had to rotate the crescent wrench every time I would move it down here then have to flip it and then move it and then flip it. I got, you know, like what? 20 degrees every time I did that. So I had to do that a lot, but finally it's loose. They had it on there pretty freaking tight for an appliance that's not supposed to go higher than two PSI. But anyway, it, it is what it is. So here comes the probe. I haven't looked at it yet. This is me looking at it for the first time. All right, look at that. Now, see, I expected it. I think my old one had the little self-cleaning doohickey on the end. This one doesn't, it's just, it's just this metal rod. And you can see it's a little, it's got a little, it's a little corroded. I think you're supposed to um, clean it like with a scotch pad or something, you can get the corrosion off, but it probably doesn't matter too much. You just get, so it's not coated in gunk and coated in dirt. Let me go, let me go look. I think I still have my old one from my Utica boiler. Let me go look at that probe. Just one second. Okay, I was wrong. The, the old one, it looks a little different, but it's basically also just an electrode rod here, a little smaller diameter than, uh, than the one that came on my Peerless. But I must have seen it on on YouTube where some of these have a little a little hinged kind of end piece that I believe it kind of it kind of moves with the water motion or something and it and it kind of keeps it keeps the end clean or something. Did I imagine this? I don't know. Anyway, that's what it is. I'm going to go clean up my uh my one off this boiler uh, boiler then I'll reinstall it. Okay, so I cleaned it. Now it's weird. It, if it would focus on this guy here. There we go. It seems like it had a sort of a copper coating on it that was partially worn off. And there's like a, I don't know if it's a stainless underneath it. I don't know what it is, but it seemed like that coating was on there on purpose. So I didn't, I didn't, I removed a little bit with, I didn't use a, a 3M Scotch-Brite pad. I just used like a dish, wash, a dish uh, sponge with a sort of a rough side on it. And it did, I was able to remove some of this copper, what appears to be copper cladding here. Uh, so it wasn't on there very, very tight, but I didn't, I, I didn't take it all off. I don't know if it's supposed to be on there, but uh, I have a feeling it's gonna be fine. And then I put a real thin layer of uh, pipe dope on here. I always use tape um, everywhere else, uh, except on gas fittings, which I haven't done any gas fitting on this thing since I installed it uh, four years ago. Um, but uh, still, you know, I had my old can of pipe dope and so I put a little pipe dope on here. I don't even know if it really needs it. It's brass going into cast. So um, it probably would be would be just fine. Even without any pipe dope, but I put some on there. Alright, so there's that finger tight. I'll just put another turn or so back onto it and uh, and then put the low water cutoff back on it. I'll be right back. Okay, that's back on. There's the connection for the probe. Put that back on. Nice and tight. There we go. And uh, Turn the boiler back on, and um, it's uh, it might be doing the intermittent level test, or just puts that light on when it powers up, or both. I don't know, but you can see it still says low water. So um, I'm going to pour the water back in. See if I can do this with one hand. Ah, all right. 
gotta tighten this. I'm gonna drop my phone in into my uh, boiler water here. Okay, there we go. Good thing about a nice small boiler like this, I can I can um, really drain just a few gallons to drain it down to test the low water cutoff. Oh, there we go. And the light went out. So now it sees the water, so that's good. Pour the rest of this back in. Why do I pour this back in? Because it's nice boiler water that's all deoxygenated and it's got a bunch of iron already floating in it, I presume, and it's got the right pH and it's got my eight way in it. So why do I want to go throwing that away? I don't. So I just pour it back in. It's super clean anyway, because it's got it's got the eight way and the pH level there, so it doesn't make any rust hardly at all. So there it is. And um, I've got it calling for heat. I thought, oh yeah, I have it calling for heat. But when I when I power back on my boiler, my my timer kicks in for one cycle. It's a long story, but with this low pressure gauge here, or low pressure uh, switch here, when the boiler gets to like five or so inches of water column, it fires off a timer relay. And that timer relay, the way it's made is it, when I power the, when I apply boil, uh, power back to the boiler, it has to go through one cycle of timing. So that's why it's doing this. But the important thing is, is the, Low water light is now out because I've re-added the water and the thing sees it. And now it's nice and clean for another, I don't know, five years or so before I probably take that off again. So see you then. Oh, and I forgot and uh, should mention here, and I didn't even think about it when I had it open, but I did cut the power at the beginning of this. Uh, so I was pretty safe. But these two terminals right here, this red and white, on uh, at least on modern peerless boilers for sure and and maybe a bunch of other boilers too this is a 120 volt cycle guard so it it's it's seeing it's seeing the line voltage even before the boiler does because what this does is it cuts when it cuts out it's cutting all power to the boiler okay it's not messing around with just, you know, 24 volts AC. This is, uh, this is line voltage right here. So definitely power down your boiler before you open this thing up because uh, there's deadly voltage sitting right there. So fair warning.